Let's watch the one with the iPad kids. Oh! What are all those touch- Wait, what is- what did this say? The content in this video is for informational purposes only, based on believed real- okay. What are all those touch screens doing all those growing little brains? All she wants for the holidays is, well, not toys, but skincare products. All I wanted this year was skincare and makeup. 11-year-old I... Olivia Clyde I... is obsessed with beauty products. I... 11 year olds should not use makeup. Hello, <laughs> YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. 11 year olds should not wear makeup. N never. Never. Their skin is gonna get ruined so fucking early. When she's 20, she's gonna look like she's 40. Eighth grade kid could not spell a single word correctly on his list. Eighth grade. <laughs> Generation Alpha, the supposed future leaders and current generation of our society. That's but with the way they're growing up, will they actually be the future generation to make an impact? Or is Gen Alpha as doomed as people say it is? Who are Generation Alpha? Gen Alpha, or people born between 2010 and 2025, is said Between 2010 and 2025, so the youngest of them would be 14. Okay to become the most populated generation in history with over 2.8 million kids born every week. They follow Gen Z and are the children- I mean, yeah, and the generation after generation alpha is gonna be the then most populated one. That's just how this works, you know? ...of the millennial generation. Although Gen Alpha is populating a large amount of society, why do other generations think there's no hope for this generation? With countless cases of kids acting out in public, lashing out, and behaving erratically, many believe that Gen Alpha is already ruined. You see babies and toddlers often throwing temper tantrums the second their smart devices are taken away. And teachers... It's their parents' fault! It's their fucking parents' fault for enabling this man! Like... Holy shit! The parents... The parents gave the kid a fucking iPad because they didn't want a parent! ...are begging parents to do something because their kids barely scrape by in school. Time and time again, we hear about just how doomed Gen Alpha is. But where are these horror stories coming from? And what makes Yo, Gen Bloody, Alpha what's so up? different from all the generations before them? The short answer, the internet. The rise of iPad kids. Uh, uh I just read that somewhere. Where? The generation that never had to fear getting beaten. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if any Gen Alphas are getting beaten or not, man. What of that, man. When you think of a kid in today's day and age, how do you picture them? Most of you probably had an image of a kid with an iPad in their hands, right? That's because Gen Alpha is not only the youngest generation, but also the most technologically dependent one. Generation Alpha was raised by screens, whether by TV, a computer, or the infamous iPad. With almost 80% yep. of kids owning an iPad or another version 80%? of a tablet, you can't deny the nickname that many call this generation, iPad Kids. This is my sister? My sister gave her children also iPads. I don't know how they react when the iPad is gone. I don't I don't interact with my uh, family too much, but my sister's part of the problem. My sister's children also have that. It's just No. Nah. To be fair, when I visited once, they were really lovely. They were really lovely kids. And they weren't on the iPad at all. They weren't on the iPad at all, and they were playing with me, so... What happens when mom and dad take away an iPad from two-year-old Ashlyn Brooks? <laughs> Imagine being that young and being able to say iPad. Since their creation, iPads have been used as a tool for parents who are simply too busy with work. Technology has proven to be a hassle-free way of keeping kids occupied, whether at public places, social events, or just during the day-to-day. -day. With iPads being an evolved version of parenting in the 20th century, screens are simply <laughs> considered parenting. the new you can't call this parenting. And although parents Not may benefit from ever. relaxing- You've seen an insight from Bo Burnham, right? I have, yes. Oh my god, I gotta rewatch that at one point.
No, it's too late for me, but there are a lot of little cable boys and girls out there who still have a chance. Don't you understand, Steven? Somebody has to kill the babysitter. <laughs> I, I don't get the quote, I'm sorry. Like I said, bring back the Asian method of, if needs be, whooping as <laughs> Being a your child is never the solution, but all I'm gonna say is that a lot of us did get beaten as a child. Mm. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> After work, iPads could be doing more harm than good. It's gotten to a point where Gen Alpha is entirely reliant on their devices, growing a digital addiction that they cannot seem to stop. In 2012, a three-year-old boy was kicked off an Alaskan Airlines flight from Seattle what? because of the extreme temper tantrum he threw after getting his iPad taken away. The kid had before been playing off. with a tablet before takeoff, but when planes ascend, all devices were asked to be turned off, and this one iPad was no exception. But when flight attendants this isn't even true. Like, from what I know, you don't even need to turn off the devices. You just need to put them in airplane mode. On my last flights that I had, and I would say within the last 10-ish years, I was on probably like four flights or what? Maybe more? Five, maybe? Not entirely sure. Five, six flights, right? I always had my phone on. I always had my phone on. Just on airplane mode. Like, just put that shit in airplane mode, no issue. Oh, talk of, they asked to turn off. On takeoff, they asked to turn it off. Airplane mode is a thing, hello? Yeah, legit, it's literally called that, right? <laughs> like, it's literally called airplane mode. <laughs> That's literally what it's intended for, like... Hello? <laughs> Attendants tried to get the kid to turn his tablet off, he started to wreak <laughs> havoc. The child began a raging outburst, hitting his head against the roof of the plane and Jesus. desperately begging for his tablet back. His family tried to calm him down and buckle him in so that they could take off, but no one was able to control him. Things got so bad that the pilot had to turn the entire plane around <gasps> on the runway. The boy and his wow. entire family was escorted off the flight, causing them to miss their vacation to St. Martin Island. And this wow. was over. 10 years ago at the what? start of the iPad Kids generation. Since then, Gen Alpha has grown more attached to their devices. Social media has become a part of their day-to-day -day routines for better or for worse, and it's caused kids to become addicted to the internet. And the stay-at-home crisis- TikTok needs to get deleted, man. TikTok, TikTok needs to be gone. We found the don't make me turn around pig. <laughs> crisis that happened in 2020 only made things worse. Kids were locked indoors and were unable to get any sort of social interaction from other peers or teachers. Gen Alpha was true. But that was, that's literally just the last four years. Like, when did the pandemic ha start happening in 2020? Like, those kids, like, kids before that shouldn't already like, should already have been exposed to other sh uh, shit, man. Like, to know how to entertain themselves with other shit, man. It's, uh, it's because parenting don't want to actually parent, so I said. I don't know, parenting license or something, man. Reading technology like a full-time job, devoting 40 hours a week to using it. With social media being accessible to anyone, internet usage was at an all-time high. They couldn't go out to play because of restrictions, so the only way they could get any form of contact with the outside world was through their devices. Gen Alpha was going through critical development phases during the stay-at-home crisis. The online world became their new reality because it was all they knew. And considering the sort of horrible stuff that we have access to online, Line, this is concerning. Technology usage on its own isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's the content that's being consumed that's the real perpetrator. Parents may think that they know what their kids are watching online, but sometimes things they aren't really don't. what they seem, even they really in don't. videos supposedly made for kids. Internet brain rot. You might have heard- Have you guys heard about that shit that on YouTube kids? Like, people will actually upload um, full shit on YouTube kids that they will hide behind looking like their children's show, like some Peppa Pig shit that, I don't know, where they're literally fighting each other, beating each other, and whatever the fuck not. It's, 
the Elsa Gate shit. Yeah, the Elsa Gate shit. Exactly. That's what it was called. That is insane. That shit's so insane. Of the term brain rot. Popularized by social media, brain rot <laughs> is the term time. that internet users have created to describe those lacking proper socialization and are obsessed with digital content to an unhealthy level. Oh God, bro, Gen Alpha content's some of the most incoherent brain dead oh. I've ever seen in my life, okay? Like, I can physically feel my brain cells frying every second I spend watching them. Level 100 Gaiat, Ice Spice Riz W Riz Gaiat. You've Gaiat to be rizzing me in Ohio at 3 a.m. When you think about Thanks for the follow. Wait. I thought when Shu said that in her video, she was memeing. I, 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 I thought she was memeing. I thought... Ohio Rizla was a meme. I thought that was a meme. In my life, okay? Like, I can physically feel my brain cells frying every second I spend watching them. Level 100 guy at Ice Spice Riz W. You riz Gaiat. You've Gaiat to be rizzing me in Ohio at 3 a.m. When you think about brain rot, Gen Alpha tends to be the usual demographic that comes to mind. That's because the internet has been their primary means of interaction with the world since they were born. Brain rot content can also be identified by the constant usage of internet slang, overly bright colors, <laughs> and skibbity. attention grabbing content that switches every few seconds. Oh a key my example God. is popular kids' media like Skibbity Toilet that seem to capitalize on Gen Alpha's decreasing attention attention span by overwhelming them with hyper-stimulating content. Skibbity that Toilet is, so is a creepy. web series on YouTube that features Wait, a is? variety of models from games like Gary's Mod and Counter-Strike as they battle in a raging war. The two sides Wait, are what? singing human-headed toilets, which are called Skibbity Toilets, and humanoids who have- Wait, there's law behind Skibbity Toilet?! There's Skibbity Toilet in there?! What?! I thought it just- I thought it was just a, a, like a one second clip or something! What?! Maybe I'm not as brain rotted as I thought I would be! Holy shit! ...have human bodies, but items as their heads, like cameras or TVs. The series was created by a man named Alexei Gerasimov. It first premiered on YouTube in February of 2023. Since the first episode was released, the channel had gained over 40.6 million subscribers and has over 15 billion views to date. Each episode features the Skibbity Toilets and other characters engaged in full-on conflicts, animated in the most lore. obscure and dramatic ways. There's never a dull moment in the videos, which to Gen Alpha is the exciting part. On the surface level, this might just seem like out of the box wacky content for kids. But the harsh reality I of wouldn't it call is this that the toilet could be damaging to children. With a constant overstimulating Why would this be content, for kids? kids? Why the fuck would this ever be for kids with the way this shit looks? What do you mean for kids? What do you mean? Skibbity toilet could be damaging to children. With the constant overstimulating content, kids get used to hyperactivity, making everything else feel mundane. This can cause irritability, a low attention span, and a lack of patience since kids are- I'd cry in my bed at night if I saw that same! Like, what do you mean it's for children? Now so used to hyperstimulation. Parents have long since been concerned with whether or not Skibbity Toilet is appropriate for it's the kids not? to watch. And it even Hello? got to a point where Russian authorities had to get involved. Bro, 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 bro. My mother, like my mother uh, thought One Piece wasn't appropriate for me to watch when I was a kid. I Honestly, like watching One Piece now, I don't think children should watch One Piece in the end. It's not really a child show. <laughs> On the surface, it, it was okay, right? Like the first season were completely fine, but with all the issues, One Piece is attacking me, right? But I digress. The reason my mom didn't want me to watch One Piece was because it looked so weird. Two girls, one cup. Oh my fucking god. Oh my fucking to god. Investigate the show. A Moscow man concerned over Skibbity Toilet's detrimental effects on children asked the police yeah, to block sure, send the that videos to me, from the internet to prevent kids from watching it. This investigation has gotten mixed opinions so far, with some claiming that getting the police involved over a kid's series is ridiculous. Other parents also echoed the same concerns, believing that Skibbity Toilet may be doing more harm than good. One of us said. No conclusive answer as to whether or not the series is negatively affecting children. This 
form of hyper-stimulating media has become a growing trend for Gen Alpha. Parents are becoming increasingly worried that their kids are becoming like zombies because of this kind of content. Another popular kids show is Coco Melon, which is Not usually Coco targeted Melon. toward babies and younger Not children. The Coco, Coco Melon. Melon has become one of the most famous kids shows and has been a go-to entertainment source for parents to show their kids. But in recent months, I think uh, my sister's children also like Coco Melon, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Once the once favorable reputation of Coco Melon has completely shifted because now parents are starting to discover a correlation between their kids' behavioral issues and the show. On December 26th, 2021, TikTok user It's Mama Bell posted a video that raised some serious concerns about Coco Melon. The okay. text on the video said that she had just switched from showing her kids Coco Melon to a YouTuber called Miss Rachel, and that prior to switching, her children would just sit in front of the TV like zombies. Oh, in the God. comments, countless moms agreed with her, saying that Miss Rachel, who is a YouTuber who focuses on educational content, was much more beneficial for their kids. More and more parents realized that their kids were becoming addicted to Coco Melon to the point where they wouldn't be able to move away from the screen, and they weren't learning anything from the show either. The show focused solely on keeping the children's attention with bright colors, repetitive songs, and fast jump cuts, all of which are tactics that the show uses to children's shows that used to teach children shit like back in my day when i grew up there were like a million shows that literally like taught children things what the fuck on tv yeah i guess so the extremists now i don't even know if they're still on tv keep kids hooked let's see how many seconds it takes for each one of these scenes to change one two three <laughs> we're the teletubbies man where are the Teletubbies at? One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one. What the fuck? Two, one, two, one, two, one. This what? epidemic of what? What was two, that about? Keep kids hooked. Let's see how many seconds it takes for each one of these scenes to change. One, two, three, one, two. One, oh, scenes two, changing. Three, one, two, one, two, one. To one, Holy shit! To one, to one. Uh, this epidemic just of zooms non-stop can be compared to the feeling that you get from substances. Hence, why Coco Melon is. I don't want to say it, but why not go out, touch grass? What the fuck are kids doing in twenty four? Legit, it's because the parents don't want a parent. Where's Bonnie and Thomas at to give you trauma? One hundred percent. Where are they, man? Where are they? Like, parents just don't want to fucking parent. Like, they're not. The parents nowadays are not ready to be a parent. That's the issue. Like, that is the fucking issue. They're not ready to fucking parent and they still have a child. Like, what is the point of you being a fucking parent if you don't want to take care of your child? Ah! So addictive to children. And it's not just random TikTokers that have said this. Actual childhood experts have chimed in, agreeing that Coco Melon is too overstimulating for kids with yeah, Sesame addiction. Street dead. Coco Melon watchers are usually between ages two and five, which are critical years when it comes to early childhood development. This is the time when kids are developing language, creativity, and social skills. And shows like Coco Melon have possibly only made these tasks more difficult. And not to mention the disturbing influx of Elsa Gate content that's taking oh, oh, over is. all of the kid friendly and i have a whole separate video of that that you can watch all of this inappropriate oh, no. content not only has caused concern for gen alpha parents but also the for fuck? teachers as well because not only are kids becoming more addicted oh, to screens the but they're age. also doing much worse in school the dumber generation God. It's a common theme in social media for people to say that Gen Alpha is considered one of the dumber generations. The more kids become addicted to their screens, the harder it is for them to live a life away from it. That includes during school hours. It's as if kids are having a harder time paying attention. Likely and you know what's crazy? My friend is a teacher. Like My friend that I went to school with and still communicate to, with, to this day from time to time, she's a teacher. And those children, they grew up with the shit, right? They had the shit ready, readily available. They don't know how to create an email account. Like, they don't know how to do anything on the internet. They just know touch screen scroll. They just know scrolling. They don't know anything else. It's insane. It's so insane.
you would think they know how to at least navigate throughout their fucking phones. They don't. They just know scroll, 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 scroll. It's insane. It's so insane. They don't know how to create a PowerPoint. They don't know how to look up shit. They don't know anything. Because the internet may be conditioning their brains to shorter content, hence a shorter attention span. Teachers around the world have been going viral on TikTok after sharing just how concerned they are about the educational development of their Gen Alpha students. They have said that students are now reading and writing at several grade levels behind, with a large majority of kids being unable to understand basic literacy, spelling, and grammar. Um, this eighth grade kid cannot spell could not spell a single word correct eighth grade how old are you in the eighth grade man how fucking old are you in the eighth grade like 12 13 14 around that age how do you not a single word specifically circular Look how they wrote specifically. Accomplish. Ak. Yukplitch. Yukplitch. Old enough for Discord. Oh, lordy lord. They shouldn't be old enough for Discord. Discord should be an aged higher, man. Regular. Rager. Memorize. Mrzbliz. Commitment. Come it. Unique. Unek. Recognize. Recognize. How? Particular. Particular. Am I a genius in a few years when old people die off? Yes. And then it's going back to um, the uh, metal generation being <laughs> dumbasses. Holy shit. Written as hurt. Not even. Not even. Like, specifically, the, the kid wrote it at sickle. Sickle. Exactly on his list. Eighth grade. TikTok user QBSki is an elementary school teacher from Atlanta, Georgia, who took to TikTok to express his concern for the <laughs> students in right class. There. He said that although he teaches a seventh grade class, many of his students are nowhere near that level of education. How the fuck? Seventh grade, they are still performing on the fourth grade level. Ain't nobody talking about how they just keep moving, passing them on. I can put as many zeros in this grade book as I want to. They're gonna move that child to the eighth grade next year. This teacher even stated that some of the students in his class perform at kindergarten first, second, and third grade levels, even wow. though they're just two years away from entering high school. Wow. He's not the only teacher that feels this way. And I teach at one of the more- Why are they not being held back for a class? How are these kids not being held back? Here, they would be held back if they didn't reach a certain grade. Like, if people were fucking stupid around here, they're being held back a class. What? Because that would be racist? What does this have to do with racism? This teacher even stated that some of the students in his class perform at kindergarten, first, second, and third grade levels, even though they're just two years away from entering high school. And he's not the only teacher that feels this way. And I teach at one of the more affluent schools. So when I tell you that these babies cannot read, they cannot write and they cannot comprehend. I'm not being funny. I'm being dead serious. When it comes to high school kids, it's not much better because the creator, Cool Nace, AKA N, said that her 10th and 11th grade English students were only capable of performing at a sixth or seventh grade reading level despite being in their upper years of high school. And other sources continue to claim that Gen Alpha kids don't only have poor learning skills. They have it is poor so behavior doomed. too. Young students of misbehaving course. in the classroom has become the new norm. And when teachers- Oh yeah, that too. That's what my friend told me about uh, as well. That they would just fight. They wouldn't listen. They would just fight. They would literally just stand up and leave classes. There's no respect. There's nothing left. 
I feel like I'm living in a bubble because I don't experience the shit on a day-to-day -day basis, right? I feel like... Yeah, personally, I feel unaffected by this, but now I feel like I'm living in a bubble because... Like, now it's in front of my eyes with this video. We're all living in bubbles, Ugh, I guess. Is that like and try to discipline them properly it doesn't work out my principal told me you can't do that in georgia what they have completely taken discipline out of education what? at this point especially what? in georgia you what? cannot use the grade book to implement any kind of discipline or any kind of enforcement with students and that is going to be the ruin of our kids but it's not just attention disorders that are at fault here the internet has also given gen alpha a golden ticket oh, when it comes no. to cheating their way through school chat gpt oh, ai no. tools like chat gpt can easily help kids finish their homework in seconds the shift has reduced the emphasis on work ethic along with valuable life skills like critical thinking and communication without these skills gen alpha has become prone to all sorts of influences because since they are so conditioned to only look at the surface level, they take most of what they see on social media as the truth without researching for themselves and questioning it. Everything they see online is immediately taken as a fact, which is detrimental to these young, Jesus. impressionable kids. And companies are taking advantage. But that's literally how, like, uh, the boomer generation is like, they also take shit that they see on the internet for as a fact. I mean, literally just going full circle in a way. What is going on? of this they're targeting a demographic that they shouldn't be kids the gullible generation anywhere you go on the internet you are destined to run into an advertisement whether on the tiktok shop or just casually scrolling on social they fire that one teacher who tried to teach kids critical thinking yeah i watched that video on esmond i watched that um i watched esmond talk about that shit that's crazy man that is so crazy it's insane Social media marketing has evolved from billboards and newspapers to scrolling on your phone. Adults are able to understand what an organic piece of content is versus a paid promotion, but young kids are less perceptive of this. They use viral trends as guidelines for what they should or should not like, even if it's not meant for them. As kids consume more online content, including advertising, they're being influenced to buy products that are just not made for them. What? We see this happening all the time with Gen Alpha, especially due to the rise influence of TikTok, nah, but they are millennials and older generations. My nine-year-old skincare routine. I'm telling you, the parents are the issues. The parents are the problems. ...due to the rising influence of TikTok, but they aren't alone. Millennials and older generations drive forward these trends and make the mainstream on social media, one product being the infamous Stanley Cup. Drawing screams of excitement and tears of joy. Why? This year's hottest status symbol and so a cup? holiday gift. Oh my god, Stanley! is the Stanley Tumblr. This Tumblr cup has become the reason for multiple what? news headlines and heavy in-person lines as early as what? 4 a.m. And because it's so popular, people are willing to go to the ends of the earth to get one. Although this is the it's new craze, if you want to get your hands on one, it won't be cheap. The Stanley Tumblr will run you back around $45 USD with limited edition cups costing even more than that. This cost is pretty hefty for a water bottle and it's definitely not one that everyone can afford. But there are constant Consequences if you can't pay for one. Ohio mom Dana Motika went viral on TikTok, posting how her nine year old daughter was bullied for bringing a less expensive lookalike to school. Dana had bought her daughter a $10 Stanley lookalike from Walmart as a gift for Christmas. Her daughter brought the cup to school after Christmas break only to come home upset because kids in school were bullying her. The sole reason? Because her Stanley cup was fake. Over the break, that reminds me of that one South Park episode where Cartman wanted an iPad, but his mom could only afford a fake iPad. You guys seen that episode? Literally reminds me of that shit. What is this? What is this bullshit? And that episode is... It's like an episode quite a couple of years old at this point, man. Holy shit.
Multiple girls in her grade had gotten real Stanley Cups as presents and they were quick to call out Dana's daughter for her dupe. They said that hers was not as cool and made fun of her because of it. To us, it might seem wild that a young girl is being bullied over not having an expensive water bottle, but for Gen Alpha, this is their new reality. Gen Alpha has become possibly one of the most materialistic generations ever. With so much advertising being shown at their young eyes, these kids feel the need to buy everything they see or face the fear of not fitting in. And it's not just Stanley Cups that have proven this. Earlier this year, the beauty retailer Sephora made headlines after multiple story times about Sephora 10 year olds went viral on TikTok. 10 year olds. Viral clips have been going around of kids going in Sephora making a big 10 year olds. Mess. During this trend, dozens of people fled flooded the TikTok For You page with their own personal horror stories with Generation Alpha shoppers at the makeup store. They complained that the kids were rude and had no respect for anyone or anything in the store. I'm in Sephora right now and I'm gonna count. Yeah, because they're fucking children on teaching on respect. Because parents, because the fucking parents aren't teaching their children respect. And don't come at me with Oh, but the other p uh, children's influence will also damage us. It's their parents' fault as well. It's all of the parents collectively. It's a generation that's having children this young and don't want to take care of the fucking child. My niece had the same issue a few years ago. She got bullied by having an Android device. She got upset because I wouldn't buy her an iPhone until she earned it. What the fuck? What the fuck? How many 10 year olds I see? One, two, three. Currently walking past a 10 year old getting her eyebrows done. Four, five, six. There's a whole group of them over here. Kids as young as four were shopping in the aisles of Sephora for expensive beauty products that they Bro, this, this shit just makes me so happy that the other day when I was at the store, that there were literally just two young children, probably aged around 10, that just wanted a single bag of, they literally just wanted a single bag of gummy bears. They were in front of me at the cashier. They couldn't afford it. They unfortunately had a couple of cents too little. I bought it for them. And they were so happy. They were so happy about that. They, they looked like child, real children. No phones in hand, nothing. They were just talking to each other. They pointed at the magazines. Those were just, those were just normal kids. That makes that shit makes me so happy. Those were just normal kids who just hung out. They weren't on their phones. They just were on gummy bears. Holy shit. Clearly did not need. The reason behind it, the internet. All she wants for the holidays is, well, not toys, but skincare products. All I wanted this year was skincare and makeup. Social media fuck? has become Gen Alpha's go-to guide for how to live their life. Whatever they see influencers do, they want to do. Whatever they see influencers buy, they want to buy. With every beauty influencer on platforms like TikTok and Instagram becoming obsessed with skincare, it was Back in my day, Pokemon cards were the shit. Pokemon cards apparently are still the shit. Children still buy Pokemon cards nowadays. At least here. Influencer on platforms like TikTok and Instagram becoming obsessed with skincare, it was only natural for Gen Alpha kids to follow in their footsteps. But this can be a red flag, especially for parents as social media sets a bad example for young girls. The Sephora kids trend is a prime example. These young girls do not need to be spending hundreds of dollars on beauty products that are targeted at adults. These products have chemicals and ingredients that can be harmful to kids, especially the ones that have yeah. gone viral online. Drunk Elephant is the name on every Gen Alpha's tongue. Originally a skincare Drunk brand elephant. meant for millennials, now a larger portion of Drunk Elephant's consumer base consists of beauty obsessed kids. With products priced from $20 to upwards of over $100. Those beauty stores, I don't know if they already have those regulations in it. They need to put into the regulations that if you're a kid, like if you're under 18, maybe under 16, just to be fair, you are not allowed to buy beauty products like there needs to be some kind of prevention for this like yes the mom might still buy it for their kid but even if, if it, there still needs to be some sort of prevention oh. 
dollars this is definitely not a brand that most kids can afford to buy at least without the help of their parents but is this really something that parents want to be getting for their kids many of these drunk elephant products contain ingredients like peptides acids and retinol which can all be damaging to youthful skin retinol is a form of vitamin a that's known for its anti-aging effects oh with higher concentrations being used to fight wrinkles these kinds of high concentrations are regularly found in beauty products and are definitely not meant for young Girls. Nope. But it's not only physical health concerns the parents are having about this growing obsession with skincare and makeup. Well, that physical. She looks like seven. That kid looks like seven, maybe eight. What do you, what do you mean? Health concerns the parents are having. This mom needs to be punched in the face. This mother needs to be punched in the face. About this growing obsession with skincare and makeup. It's also the mental effects too. Social media is doing this and you know, this could be setting up a lot of young girls with issues that will follow them well into adulthood. Young girls are constantly being overwhelmed with societal beauty standards and ever-changing trends in fashion and beauty. And for Gen Alpha, this pressure has only increased with the influx of social media influencers. They look up to influencers more than they do their own parents. Of but course. is this influence positive or negative? I'm addicted. Gen Alpha is social media obsessed. It's said that by the age of one, the average Gen Alpha kid already has over 100 pictures of them posted on social media. Almost every Gen Alpha kid is on social media. It's their main form of communication with their friends and where they get the latest news. But their what? social media screen time is often unregulated by parents, so there's no telling what these Gen Alpha kids are watching on their devices. And that's the scary part. Oh, Although friends, most too. social media platforms <laughs> like have age restrictions or content Legit? guidelines wow. kids can easily bypass them just by lying about their age yep, regardless if the platform is meant for younger audiences anyone can break the rules by posting inappropriate content us when the internet tries to cancel little girls in sephora nah, nah deep plot from this this is this is child abuse in the end this is child abuse this is harming the child those products are harming the child! So, child abuse! I'm gonna say it for what it is! Like... <sighs> Jesus Christ! is meant for younger audiences anyone can break the rules by posting inappropriate content anyway tiktok the most popular platform for gen alpha is a mishmash of all different sorts of content the for you page throws a bunch of different videos together in an that's what happened to my brother he was saying memes and stuff no one his age should know i had to explain to my parents where they came from he's nine christ almighty Endless scroll showing users the type of content that they like as well as new content that they've never seen before. One of the most common trends that you can find on social media is thirst trapping. This form of content is meant to attract attention from viewers, usually in the form of posing, dancing, or acting seductively. Although the nature of this content is meant for a much older audience, there's a ton of kids participating in these trends without realizing its implications. It's become more and more common to see a Gen Alpha kid dressed up in revealing clothing, making thirst trap content, which in itself what is already unsettling. But not to mention, there's no telling who's watching or saving this content yeah. online, which can leave them yeah. vulnerable to a certain audience that may have other intentions. With the influx of OF promotions, adult content is becoming more accessible, with social media heavily in- Always understanding implications and still doing it. Oh my god, like the fucking video we watched recently of the VR chat creeps, man. Jesus Christ. Influencing young people, it's become difficult for them to see the importance of real relationships. One in four children go outside to play nowadays, missing crucial social interactions. Most of Gen I'm surprised that it's still one in four. I'm surprised that it's still, quote unquote, as high as one in four.
Alpha spends their time indoors consuming media meant for adults. The severe dopamine addictions from internet platforms like TikTok have resulted in negative effects on younger generations, as simple as enjoying their day-to-day -day life. Kids no longer have the patience for anything because they're so used to the instant gratification That's that social media provides. That was a freaking baby! Just no longer look have the at patience for anything because they're so That's a baby! Why do you give your baby an iPad? fucking do that so used to the instant gratification that social media provides them kids can't do simple everyday tasks like brushing their teeth eating food or using the restroom without the constant stimulation of a screen gen alpha becomes impatient and frustrated at the drop the baby had a screen in its bed screen. gen alpha becomes that's a screen in, a, in the baby's bed i told you guys i told you i told you the parents don't want to fucking parent. The parents don't want to fucking parent. The parents don't want a child. Those parents don't want a child. They want, they want a pet they can show off on social media. They want a cute little pet they want to show off on social media because... Mm, look, it's tiny and it's cute. Gotta show off how cute I dress it up. Becomes impatient and frustrated at the drop of a hat, with even the smallest inconveniences getting blown out of proportion, turning into full tantrums or breakdowns. With most of their learning coming from the internet, they're being exposed to horrible behavior from those entitled influencers that they see online. And when you look at the biggest influencers now who flaunt their opulent lifestyles and endorse things like OnlyFans, are these really the people you want raising your children? No. Now, the question is, is Generation Alpha really doomed? I've talked a lot about the problems of Gen Alpha, but there are still many strengths that they have. Gen Alpha has access to more resources, knowledge, and tools than ever before. They're living in an exciting time, with technology advancing at such a rapid pace and them being so adaptable to it. If they're able to use the internet for good rather than bad, they can become some of the most intelligent people on the planet. And they're also yeah. born with empathy inside but them. The future can be bright for Gen it could Alpha. Be. All they need is but a little guidance and a push in the right direction. Yes, we as people who That's what I'm saying. Right parenting. Who care can monitor what our siblings are doing on social media. And as adults, we can teach our kids the value of hard work and we can be better examples for them to follow. My yes, friends, we should it's be. time to stop the internet from destroying this generation. Visual venture. Wait, before you go, make sure you guys click subscribe here and then watch this video about the hidden dangers of YouTube kids content because our goal is 700,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. Thank you guys for everything. Peace.